All right, friends, we're starting laying down. So we can just smoosh the shoulder blades into the floor and allow the back body to let go. Find big breath here. And give yourself a little time just to settle in. Big inhales that spread open your big rib cage and your belly equally. And big exhales that pull the belly button inward toward the spine and compress the rib cage inward. And keep breathing very deeply like this. See if you can lengthen each breath. Breathing through your nose. Allow your jaw to hang slack. See if you could feel a little bit more expansive with each inhale, taking in so much more extra space each time. With your exhales, release any tension that might remain in your body. Notice places that feel strong and open. Notice places that might feel congested, sticky. Notice all that equally without trying to change anything. And if your low back is feeling tense today, it might feel good to put a bend in your knees and drop them together as you breathe here. On the flip side of that, it might feel better to drop the knees away from each other. So you play with that. Perhaps it might feel good in your chest if you put a little bend in your elbows and let the elbows kind of flap the hands out to the side. A little external rotation in the shoulders can help spread open the chest. Now that you've been breathing here for several moments, very intentionally, very slowly, notice how you feel. Notice the emotional climate, the mental climate. Let's bring in some gentle movement here. If your legs are long, you can keep them long or you might bend your knees and knock them inward toward each other to give the low back a nice release toward the mat. And we'll make some snow angel arms. So opening your arms out wide, reaching way back behind you. Try to keep your hands close to the floor as you make the biggest snow angel arms you can. Maybe dragging your fingernails on the floor to get that wide open chest feeling. And let's take some time breathing like this. Big chest, okay. Opening up the shoulders here. Maybe one or two more times like this. And the next time your arms are back up overhead, 
pause there, put a little bend in your elbows, just enough that you feel like your armpits are kind of peeling up into the ceiling. And then let's step the feet closer in toward the hips. And then take your feet off of your mat, if you have one, out to the sides. And we'll windshield wiper the knees a few times side to side. Okay, notice how the hips are feeling. Notice the low back. Gentle rotation in that low back. A nice inner and outer hip opening. Okay, next time the knees point up, pause here and extend the left leg out long. We'll get the right leg up in the air. And extend the knee as much as feels pleasant. Okay, don't feel like you have to strain your hamstring. Just extend it to an appropriate degree and point the toe. And locate on the ceiling um, a dot, real or imaginary, around which you could draw circles with the tip of your right big toe. Okay, and these circles will of course be powered by your hip the ankle and the knee won't in themselves be moving at all. So all from the hip, we'll start to draw those circles now, nice and slow and small. Tiny circles from the hip. Okay, do your best to keep them quite symmetrical and controlled and cultivate as much control, please, as you can. Always, although the tip of the toe is reaching out, the leg is slightly plugging itself back into your hip. So it's engaged. And let's make the circles a little bigger now. As a matter of fact, let's spiral them outward more each time. Bigger each time. You might take your hands out to the sides to kind of stabilize yourself as your circles get really big. And I really wanna encourage you to pick up your right glute when you swing the right leg to the left to get that big circle. Swing it over to the right as well. We want to use 100% of this hip, this right hip. Okay, let's reverse the circles. Keep them big and slow. The only difference is we'll push through the heel this time. Push through the heel, big circle. So great rotation in the hips. Let's start to make these a little smaller. Bring it around back to center, but gradually, please. All right, getting smaller with the circles, smaller, smaller, pretty small. And now let's just let it go. Go ahead and bend that knee inward and grab either the front of the shin if your knee is healthy and behind the shin, behind the, um, the thigh if your knee is injured. So from here, just gentle inward movement with that leg. We're thinking of kind of pulling it toward the heart, maybe massaging side to side a little bit. Okay, moving right to left. See if you can find one spot that's especially tender. <laughs> And that could benefit from holding right there a little bit. So a few breaths here, shoulder blades down, breathing. Maybe just keep your eyes closed. And I'll try to use my words so that you don't even have to look. It's so nice to practice with your eyes closed. Okay, let's uh, soften up a little bit on this and we'll grab behind the thigh. So grab fingers interlaced behind that thigh. So your hands are on your hamstrings now, the big, big muscles, okay, on the back of your leg. Let's start to lengthen and wake those up a little bit. So put a nice flex in your right ankle and press the heel up to the ceiling and then pull the heel back in towards your glute. And let's do that a few more times. Press the heel up. And pull it in. 
keep that going. Take a couple more, okay? So chances are you're feeling, you're noticing the hamstring moving under your hands. So get a sense of how much you want to lengthen it. What's pleasant, something pleasant. And next time you press the heel high, let's hold there and just enjoy that hamstring opening. So first of all, remember to keep breathing. And then let's reground the shoulder blades, okay? Benefit from some upper body stability here. And if you need a little less here, bend your knee. If you like this feeling and you want a bit more, you can press more into the heel and extend the knee fully, perhaps even moving the knee a little closer to your heart. Take a few more breaths here. As you are ready, let that go. Okay, bend back into the knee. And then let's bend the left knee. Bring the left foot up by your hips. And we'll create a figure four shape here by putting the right ankle on top of the left knee. And you can just let go with your hands and take them out beside you here. And we want to think of flexing the right ankle perfectly in that little right angle flex so that it hooks nicely on the left knee. It's very convenient. And think of pressing your right knee away from you. So let's just pause here and take a moment to feel the right outer hip working to move the knee away as the right inner hip gets a lovely spreading open feeling. So could you keep this figure four shape, very crisp, moving the right knee away from you and just start to drop the knees side to side, cultivating a little twist one side, twist to the other side. So take a little time, side to side, keep moving, breathing. I like to exhale on the twist, inhale back to center. And I find that keeps me from going too fast also. <laughs> keep the shoulder blades grounded, keep that knee moving away. Okay, next time the knees drop to the right, let them fall. Okay, drop the right knee to the right, pause there. And we'll shimmy the left foot over to the left until your left knee comes as low as you want it to go. So if you'd like it to stay six inches off the floor, awesome, stay there. If you're comfortable going a little lower with the knee, please go wherever feels best. And then look to the left, flex your feet, and engage the knees downward as much as feels appropriate, okay, for your hips, for your knees, breathe. All right, one more nice breath here, please. And let's rock the legs back up and in. When you come up, go ahead and cross your right leg all the way over your left. And you can just single cross at the knee if that's convenient for you. You can also double cross at the shin. Pick the one you like the best. And we'll drop the knees all the way over to the left now. Feel free to fidget yourself and rearrange yourself so that this twist is quite comfortable. And then look to the right. Breathe. Okay, we'll take a little time allowing the tissues along the right side of the hip, back and low back to release. Sometimes we just need to give some tissues a little time to realize it's safe to let go. To try to release all effort from that right side of your body. Ground that right shoulder blade. Take some more deep breath here. Okay. 
Think of arching your spine up off the floor while you twist, okay? As your shoulder blades ground, allow that to give your heart freedom to move up. All right, rolling out of your last breath, bring everything back to center. Untangle your legs, and this would be a great time for some windshield wipers. Okay, shaking it out. Feels nice in the hips. Go ahead and extend your right leg here. Just rest it with that hip. Take a little time. And we'll get the left leg up in the air here. Hands out to the side a little bit. Okay, and we'll extend the left knee as much as feels appropriate in your left hamstring. You can always bend it more. But do point the toe. Locate your spot on the ceiling and start to draw tiny circles with the tip of the left toe. So please control this movement to the best of your ability. Imagine this movement coming from your belly button. Okay, so use core strength, core control. Let's make these circles larger with each revolution. Brace yourself against the floor so that you have the stability you need to cultivate mobility. And then as the circles get really big, allow your left glute to come up off the floor when you swing the leg way out to the right, okay? Swing it way out to the left as well. And if you have a small space like me, you'll be obliged to bend your knee to get the most range of motion out of that hip. Okay, so full range of motion of the left hip now. Let's reverse it. Keep it big, please. But let's push through the heel this time. So we're, we have a different action in the shin and the calf. We're getting a little smaller now. Start rolling it back in towards center. Smaller, smaller, all right, pretty small. Go ahead and bring that knee in towards your chest. Okay, grab behind the knee if it's sensitive, grab in front of the knee if it's fine. And start to hug it towards your chest, grounding your shoulder blades and getting a little bit of a side to side wiggle to find the most tender spot. Where is that spot that could benefit from a little extra time there? Find that spot and sink in. Ground the shoulder blades and breathe. Okay, let's let go of opening up that left hip crease and take our hands back behind the thigh. Okay, if you had your shin, grab your thigh and we'll start to open up the left hamstring and wake it up. So uh, left heel presses high, left heel pulls in toward the glute. And let's take a few more like this. Keep your nice ankle flex, please. Attempt to keep your shoulder blades grounded even though they tend to want to peel up here. And next time you press the heel up, hold it there. Settle into the perfect, pleasant hamstring stretch for you. No pain. Okay. Feels nice in that hamstring. Maybe extend the knee fully and push through the heel if that's appropriate. Flex that foot big time for a great calf stretch. And maybe they move the knee a little closer to your heart. Okay. 
Okay, softening up on this, let's build a figure four. So we need the right leg to bend, foot in. Okay, right foot on the floor, right knee pointed up. Now we can stack the left ankle on there. So flex your left foot, that ankle has a strong flex. It hooks on the knee. Then you can take your arms out to the side. And we're just thinking of moving the left knee away. So we're not touching it. We're using the strength of the left outer hip to move the inner hip. So the left outer hip and the inner hip are kind of partners. They're antagonistic muscles. So when one engages, the other must release. Okay. So you can use that to your advantage. Continue to press that left knee away, finding some extra space in the left inner hip. And then see if you can crystallize this figure four shape. Left knee moves away and start to drop the knee side to side. Okay, do your best to keep that figure four. And next time the knees drop over to the left, pause there. The left knee will come to the floor first. And then you get to decide what you wanna do with the right knee. So shimmy the right foot to the right until the knee comes as low as you want. If it's too far, it might feel like a strain in your right hip. So don't push too far. And then look to the right and settle in. Flex those ankles, okay? And then put at least a little bit of downward engagement in those knees. So you're working inner and outer hip, inner and outer thigh. Just enough. Breathe. Think of wrapping that belly button downward and lifting the heart a little bit. And then it's time to bring your legs back up and in. So come on up. And then let's cross the left leg all the way over the right. You can single cross or double cross. You decide, okay, and drop the legs to the right this time. Fidget so that it feels just right. Okay, usually you might feel good moving your hips over to the left for this. Okay, so that the knees can fall more to the right. And then look to the left. You look to the left with your long spine. Enjoy this great twist. Okay, see if you can let gravity and time do a lot of the work for you. Softening across all the big sheets of tissue, all the connective tissue between your left armpit all the way across your hip, all the way down to your left knee. Slightly arch your chest up off the floor here as well. As you're ready, rock the legs back up and in. Go ahead and untangle them. And let's take a few more windshield wipers here. Notice how your hips feel. Tune into the low back sensations there. And the next time your knees point up, pause. Pull them in towards your chest, tuck your hands behind and we're rocking it up. Come on up. Okay, if you find a comfy seat uh, and point your toes out to the side, we can roll it over through hands and knees. 
So I want to combine a cat cow with a wrist stretch here just to give our forearms and our wrists a little bit of love. So point your fingertips out to the side and then back at you, but the palm's still down. See if you can come down comfortably, maybe with a little bend in the elbow. Let's do the same with both hands. Okay, if two hands is too much, try one or none. But just like we're doing a cat cow, elbows point back as you inhale and pull your heart forward. Use your strong arms to do this. Lift the belly button. As you exhale, push the floor away. So let's take a few rounds like that. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, push the floor. Okay, maybe get a little bit of a side to side movement in here. Take advantage of allowing the head to hang when you can. And then allow yourself to bring it back to a flat back. And for here, because we spent so long with our wrists like this, go ahead and flip them over, palm up with the fingers pointed at you. And let's just roll around a little bit <clears throat> on the wrists. Roll in all the directions. All right, bring it back to hands and knees. And let's pick the right knee up and we'll start to circle out the right hip. So try to keep your hips level for this. Okay, that right hip stays the same height as the left. And that just obliges us to use a little bit of a different musculature to lift the knee. And rewind that, keep the hips level. And now pick the right hip up. So stack your hips, make a big dramatic hip circle using 100% of your hips range of motion. And rewind that. All right, now next time your knee points back, pause there. The right knee is bent, point the toes at the back of your head. Just like we're doing a cat cow, grip the mat, pull your heart forward, find a big breath in, okay? Try to point the right toes at the back of your head as you lift your belly button. When you exhale, pull the knee into your nose, okay? Let's do that again. Inhale, extend your spine, open up your front, body, okay, peeling the heart forward, toe to your head, exhale, peel open the back body here. One more, just like that, big breath in, toe to the back of your head, hold here and breathe. Feel free to tuck the back toes to get yourself a little more oomph on the mat, pull the heart forward. One more big breath here. And then swing the right knee forward. Go ahead and drop the right foot outside your right hand. Let's take the left knee further over to the left and the right foot further out to the right and make big, like, kind of silly circles with the hips. And let's reverse that. And then I wanna settle into a pigeon here with you. So uh, let's walk the right foot over to the left and you'll have to move your right arm out of the way. Walk the right foot to the left and drop the right knee. And then let's try to settle into a pigeon posture here, maybe pulling the right foot closer to you as you find um, that you can kind of stay up here and let the hips sink down for a moment, for a few breaths, okay? So check out your hips here. Make sure they're level with the floor. That's one place we always want to start with in pigeon posture. 
And if you need to back out of it, you can pull the right heel really far inward towards your hips and almost kind of sit on it, okay? If you like this opening in your right outer hip, you can pull the right foot away from you, but I wouldn't move it past your right knee, okay? And then once you feel a bit more comfy here, then let's fold downward and inward once the legs are set up nicely. So maybe come down to your elbows and start by just hanging your head. Make sure your neck is nice and long. And let's make sure we have at least a little bit of activity in the legs. So the legs are gently resisting the floor. It might feel good to let your forehead come all the way down and let your arms reach out. Keep that gentle resistance against the floor. Really doesn't have to be much resistance, but whenever we try to cultivate release in any kind of muscle fibers, we need to activate in order to effectively release. So there's an, a nice balance there. So I like to play around with adding a little side stretch to pigeon posture. So try walking your hands out to the right and feeling a long stretch across the left side. Continue to resist the floor slightly with your legs. And then take your time coming back up and out of this. Come on back up. Okay, from here, we're just coming back to hands and knees. So your hands are underneath your shoulders. You can tuck those left toes and come on back. Hands and knees. Take your feet wide and your hands wide and circle it out a little bit. Take it back the other way. And notice any crackles and pops. <laughs> okay, now let's do the other side. So back to hands and knees. We'll start by gently circling out the left hip, keeping your hips level for now, please. And let's change directions with that circle. Now let's open up the hip. Make a big silly circle as you stack the hip. Big range of motion. And rewind it. All right, next time at your left knee points back, pause there. The toes point up at the ceiling. Okay, grip the mat like you're just about to do a cat cow. And you kind of are, except for this left leg is different. So belly button lifts toward the spine, protecting your low back throughout this full range of movement. Okay, pull the heart forward on the inhale as that left toe shoots toward the back of your head. And exhale, pull the left knee to your nose. So you can make this a very gentle movement. You can make it a little bit more fierce if you like. I kind of want you to interpret it, make it your own. But either way, you'll notice a nice front body opening and a nice back body opening. Okay, next time, can you point that toe at the back of your head? Let's hold there and just enjoy this big expansive feeling in the chest. Maybe tuck the back toes. Maybe deepen this extension in your upper back. Maybe. And then let it go. Pull the right knee, the left knee forward and drop the left foot outside your left hand. Okay, maybe let's take the right knee further to the right, left foot to the left, and we can circle the hips out in big silly circles here.
Reverse that. And let's transition to a pigeon. So let's take the left foot all the way over to the right side of the mat and drop the left knee and start to settle in. So try to stay up in your pigeon for a little while while you fine tune it. You might use your hands or your elbows just to hold you up, just enough, okay? Look at your hips. Make them level with the mat to the best of your ability. Okay, adjust the left knee bend to make it just right. You can pull the left foot closer to you to make this more gentle in your left hip. You can pull it away from you to make it more um, intense if you need a little more. And then once you've fine-tuned it to your needs, then come down into it. Okay, so different for everyone. It, it's really nice just to take a little time to personalize that pigeon. Come on down, my friends, just breathe. Keep a little gentle resistance to your, to your floor with your legs. So the legs are slightly activating against the floor. And it's just enough to allow you that much more release in your hips your glutes, your low back. And maybe you'd like to play around with that little side bend here, walking your hands out to the left. As you are ready, walk your hands back into center. Take your time coming back up to your hands, but from here, we're conveniently located to so just roll over onto the left hip. So roll onto your left hip, and then we can swing the right leg around, <laughs> and we are magically in a seat. Try taking your feet together here in front of you, and Remember that the closer you bring them in towards you, the more pressure on your knee joint, okay, that capsule. So if that's painful, take the feet away from you, okay? Drop your fingertips beside you. And just cultivate your longest spine here. Find some nice breath. Could you keep your spine as long as is possible, as long as makes sense? And maybe start to walk your fingertips forward as if you were attempting to move your heart past your toes, okay? So remember that as the heart moves forward, the shoulder blades will try to get involved. So keep them moving back as the heart leads the way. And you might use your fingertips to gently grip and kind of pull the heart forward, but try not to pull hard, a gentle pull. As you feel your spine beginning to round inevitably, cultivate length in the curve of the spine, please, skillfully. Maybe coming down to your elbows today. And if at some point you feel like you really want to let your spine curve nicely all the way to the base of your skull, you're going to want to let your head drop. But just keep your head uh, moving away from your shoulders. Long neck, please. And still cultivate length. Breathe into the low back. And maybe your forehead comes to rest on your hands. Hmm. 
Okay, allow yourself to roll up and out of this. Nice and slowly, hopefully it feels nice in the low back. And we'll turn it into a twist. Take your left fingers behind you, right fingers to left knee, and look over that left shoulder for a few breaths. Long spine, inhale. Big twist, exhale. Feel all the tissue on the back of the right side. And let's switch sides. Coming through center, left fingers to the right knee, right fingers behind, long spine, inhale. Exhale, look over the right shoulder. Each breath, longer spine. Bigger twist. Use your breath to open up extra space. All right, unroll yourself from that. And from here, find your most comfortable seat, okay? You might play around with just sitting with a crisscross, uh, crisscross applesauce kind of thing, or maybe pull one heel very close to your hips, allow the bottom of the foot to flip up, the top of the foot down, and do the same with the other leg, okay? And we'll end our practice here in a comfortable seat, allowing the two sitting bones to be very heavy, very grounded. You're finding a very natural pace for the breath here. Each inhale feels longer in your spine. With each exhale, we feel more relaxed. Tension melts into the floor. Allow your jaw to hang slack. Let your eyes sink heavily in your head. Take a moment just to be extremely present in this moment, noticing every second pass. And please keep resting like this for as long as you can. Thank you so much for joining me.